Today's lesson, solving exponential equations. Through a lot of this log unit, it might seem like uh, this really isn't going anywhere significant, but this lesson brings it all together. By far the most important lesson of the chapter, and I don't mean by that that it's the hardest lesson because uh, it, it really probably isn't, but it takes some of what we've learned this chapter and really applies it to situations that are really, really gonna matter moving forward. So solving exponential equations. Now you already know how to solve some simple exponential equations. So I first want to review all the exponential equations you could solve before you came into this class. For instance, 3 to the power x equals 81. And the reason you can solve this one is because 81 is a very nice number. It's a power of 3. It can be expressed as a power of 3. And so whenever you solve an exponential equation, now hang on, what do we mean by exponential equation exactly? An exponential equation means that the unknowns up in the exponent. Yes? When we run into a situation where we have the variables up in the exponent, that's when we mean we're talking about exponential equations. Okay, so this exponential equation can be solved pretty easily because 81 is a power of 3. You can sit there for a minute and you can either try it in your head or use your calculator, trial and error, and go, okay, well, 3 to the power of 2 is 9, 3 to the power of 3 is 27, 3 to the power of 4 is 81. Oh, isn't that nice? It works out to a nice power of 3, and so I can express 81 as 3 to the power of 4. Now, uh, the next step is to look at that and go, well, the bases are the same, so to make these equations equal, all I need is the exponents to be the same, and we just drop the 3 to the power of on each side, and you get the answer x equals 4. Uh, here's another one that might look like it's trouble could, at first, but really the big first step of even tougher examples is to isolate the ex exponential part. We, here we've got 10 times 3 to the x, so we isolate that 3 to the x by dividing by 10, and I get a 243. And then this one does become actually something we can do uh, just by trial and error or using our calculator and going, okay, well, 3 to the power of 2 is 9, 3 to the power of 3 is 27, 3 to the power of 4 is 81. Oh, 3 to the power of 5 is 243. And I don't expect you should do those in your head necessarily, but a couple of clicks in your calculator and you'll go, okay, I know which one, one it is. So x equals 5. Now, at that moment, it might finally occur to you that, well, this only works if these numbers are very, very nice. And you're right, in grade 11, this only worked because the numbers were all rigged up to be nice. So the blaring question is, what do we do if the numbers aren't nice? And the answer is we use logs. And I'm going to show you how to use logs later in this lesson. But again, I'm just reviewing the ones that you've seen before. Um, so it's all about getting the same base. Um, you could do slightly more complicated examples as long as they could be put in the same base. See, these don't look, this looks like big trouble, but the, the, why this question can be done without any crazy logs or anything like that is that both the bases can be expressed with the same base. See, I've got a 2 as a base on the right, and I've got a 4 on the base as a base on the left, but 4 can be expressed as 2 to the power of 2. And that gets everything into the same base. The rest of it is just algebra. I'm going to distribute the 2 on the exponent on the left. So 2 times the x and 2 times the 1 gives 2x plus 2. And then I've got same base on both sides. So if the bases are the same, I just need the exponents to be the same to make this equation equal. So I just drop those bases and I get this simple equation here, which doesn't take much to solve. Okay. So that expands. A and B were, could we express the right side with the same base? And now part C says, well, as long as we can express both sides with the same base is really the, the, the bigger idea here. So that's what we're looking for is can we express both sides with the same base? So moving on to part D, can we express both sides with the same base in this question? And the answer is yes. Uh, both of these could be expressed with base 3. So the 9 becomes 3 squared. The 27 becomes 3 cubed. Um, distribute those exponents. So 2 times 3x is 6x, 2 times 1 is 2, and on the right side, 3 times x is 3x. And now we've got same base on both sides. And we have same base on both sides. We can just drop that base. That confuses people a little bit sometimes, but all we're saying is, listen, if the bases are the same, we've got that part equal, all we got to do is make the exponents the same now. And then a couple of steps later, and you've got that salt for the x value that makes this work. And again, these questions are all working because both sides can be expressed in the same base. If they can't be expressed with the same base easily, then we need a new method, and I'm going to show that to you in a minute. Before we get to that, though, this killer example, this one is, it's sort of a rare example. You don't see a lot of these, 
Um, but I do want to bring it up as, as maybe the toughest uh, same base type example. They do include these in the grade 11 uh, homework, but um, you just don't see a lot of these. And so it's very awkward to look at this because it doesn't, it's not clear what has to happen. But there's a, what it is is there's a common factor here. And until you see it once, how can you possibly notice there's a common factor here? And the common factor here is 3 to the power of x. The first term on the left has a 3 to the x in it, and the second term on the left has 3 to the x in it. And you may not even buy that the first time you see it, but take a look if I distribute, after I take out that 3 to the power of x, if you were to distribute here, what would happen? Well, you'd multiply 3 to the x times 3 to the power of 2, you'd add the exponents, and you'd get what is on the previous line there, 3 to the x plus 2. And if you multiply 3 to the x times negative 1, you get negative 3 to the x. So that's the only way really to see that 3 to the x is in there, is to once see it factored out like that, and then maybe, maybe moving forward, you'll see that common factor in there. The rest is pretty nice. Like, what happens in the brackets is 3 squared is 9, minus 1 is 8, divide by the 8, and look how nice this is. It comes out to a base 3 number. This 27 can be expressed as in base 3, 3 to the power of 3, and same as before, when the bases are the same, you can just drop the bases, and uh, I just need x equal to 3. Very tough, very awkward example. Sort of the big, um, tough one of the grade 11 exponential course. Okay, so that's a complete review on solving exponential equations from grade 11 when you could express them both as the same base. So here's the inconvenient example. This is the example that it's in the grade 11 homework, but all you do is you try on error and come up with a decimal answer and find out that this is really inconvenient. However, now, after a few days of teaching logs, you got the power to do this question. You probably don't realize it. You need to see this example once to see what the power of logs is. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take logs of both sides. And the log I'm going to use is log base 10. When, when we don't see a, a, a base in, in a log question, we mean log base 10. And the nice thing about log base 10 is it's on every calculator. Some new, newer calculators have other log buttons, but every, cal every scientific calculator has a regular log button. And when you just see log, L-O-G, by itself with no number with it, that means log base 10. So that's the reason I'm going to use log base 10 in this question, is because it's going to be on everybody's calculator. Now, what I'm going to do is what we've done a lot in doing equations. And I want you to think about uh, if you had to do a, a little example like x squared equals 9, what would you do? You actually, what you don't necessarily write this step, but you take the square root of both sides is what you do. And the square root of x squared is just x, and I get the square root of 9 is 3. So it, it, lots of equation solving is about doing the same thing to both sides. And when the same thing I'm going to do to both sides is I'm going to take log base 10. And when you first see that, you're like, well, how did you decide to do that? Well, you got to see this whole story once before you see uh, why that's such a good move. Now, I used log base 10 called common logs. So I didn't have to write the 10 because at some point your calculator is going to kick in and be able to help us here. Um, and it, every calculator has that log base 10. Now, the important thing from yesterday's lesson, log law three says, if you've got log of a power, you can bring the exponent down out front and make it a multiplier. That was the really big deal in yesterday's lesson. So why is that so important here? That x that you see there, log of three to the power of x, the third log law says you're allowed to bring that out front if it's convenient to do so. Sometimes in yesterday's lesson, it was convenient to do so, and sometimes it wasn't. But here it's very convenient to do so because it turns that exponent, that unknown, into a multiplier, into a product. And now I can just isolate. I just take log 100 and divide it by log 3. And now my calculator can solve the question for me. I type in log 100, I divide it by log 3. You should try it right now so you know where these buttons are. And it's log base 10 of 100. But again, it's just the log button. So you hit log 100 and you go divide it by log 3 and you should get this answer 4.192, or, or rounded to 4.192. This gives us now a method to solve any exponential equation. Isolate the part that has the exponent x in it, or the unknown exponent, and just take logs of both sides, and log law 3 will take you the rest of the way. Even one like this. 
both two and three are bases. Uh, th th these bases can't be expressed in terms of each other very easily. There would be a, a really tough way to do it. And so what we do is we just take logs of both sides. And the reason we use log base 10 is because that's on everybody's calculator. Now, log law three said, an exponent inside a log can be brought out front as a multiplier. So that's what I do here. And it, it, I know it looks complicated, but the problem now is basically solved in the sense that I don't have an unknown and an exponent anymore. I've got an unknown as an, a multiplier. I've got to do a, little, do a little distribution. On the left side, I distributed the log two, and on the right side, I distributed the log three. I bring everything to do with x on the left, everything that doesn't have x on the right, and then this step, which is a little weird looking the first time you see it. I want to isolate x, so to isolate x, the best way to do it is to common factor out the x on the left side, and then I can divide by that crazy bracket that I've established there. And I get this, which is a little tough to type in your calculator. If you've got a fraction button on your calculator that shows the display top and bottom, then you should do that so you can see, you can make a fraction and go negative log three minus log two on the top and log two minus log three on the bottom. You can do that. The other option would be to go to decimals right away and go to decimals before this step, make that right side into a decimal, make that left side into a decimal and then just divide them. And the third way is before you hit divide, put a bracket around this and a bracket around that. If you put a bracket around the numerator and then hit the divide button and then hit a bracket around the denominator and uh, after you hit the divide button, then you should come up to the right answer. You should definitely practice that right now. Get the calculator you're gonna use, pause the video, go get the calculator you're gonna use, a good scientific calculator and get used to typing this in and make sure you get the answer I did, which is rounded to 4.419. Okay, so. Same basic strategy as the previous lesson, or the previous example. Take common logs of both sides so that we can bring that exponent down using log law three, and the rest of it is just isolating the x. One last thing, and this has been looming for a while. It's taken all this time to get to the point where we can do something like this, log base three of 38 with a calculator. Now, some of you will have a brand, a newer calculator that'll have log base whatever, and so you don't necessarily need this trick, but it's a handy trick available. What I'm gonna do is solve this equation a different way to get the value for x. After doing that, I'm gonna introduce a shortcut that, you're going to, that you should love. When you see it, you go, oh, now I can do any log, I can evaluate any log using any calculator, okay? So what I'm gonna do is, uh, x equals log base 3 of 38 can be rewritten in exponential form by bringing the log base 3 over to the other side and making it 3 to the x. If that's weird to you, just let me say the sentence of what the first uh, equation says. It says x is equal to the exponent you put on 3 to get 38. And that's all I'm writing here is I'm saying, okay, x is the exponent you put on 3 to get 38. So I just rewrote exponential form. The other way to think about it is the inverse of log base three is three to the power of. So when I bring log base three from the right side of this equation to the left side, I get three to the x. Now that might seem like a bad move because now I've got a complicated situation, but now this new move that I've introduced in this lesson comes to bear as I can take common logs of both sides, allowing me to use log law three to bring the x down and isolate x by dividing by log three. Now you can type that in your calculator right now, but take a look at this line and this line, and this happens every time when you're doing logs. If you've got log base three of 38, you could go through all these steps, or you could just memorize the idea that if you wanna do log base three of 38, you can just do log 38 divided by log three, and that'll give you the answer in your calculator, a convenient, very quick shortcut, worth, worth memorizing. Definitely take a moment and type that in your calculator to get, make sure you get the same thing as me. So to summarize what we've got here, this shortcut, anytime you wanna do log base A of X, any base A, any number X, you can just do common log of X divided by common log of A and any calculator is gonna be able to do that. To really show off what I mean by that is, if you wanna do log base three of seven, you just type in log seven divided by log three and it'll give you the answer. You wanna do log base nine of 400, you just do log 900 over log four, boom, 
Okay, so that is such a nice shortcut. Boy, that has to be committed to memory, or at least written on a study sheet so that you've got it available to you when you need it. Okay, great lesson, great homework um, for this section here. I encourage you to go through that stuff. Um, a little last little note is that we could have used a base other than 10. There was no reason that we had to use base 10 here, but base 10 is just convenient because it's on our calculator. But if you're moving on to this in higher levels of calculus, you'll find out that using whatever base we want will be fine. Um, and there might be a more convenient base for a particular question. But for now, log base 10 is, is, is the best choice. Okay, check out that homework. It's, it's uh, really the culmination of this chapter of showing uh, the power of, of all this log stuff. So uh, don't take it very seriously. Don't just look at them and go, oh, I know how to do it. Really get through every question. Have a great day.